Welcome to CBN 4's Primetime News. I am Sheena Harry. In the top, the cruise liner MV Britannia opened its doors to the contestants of the Miss Jamboree competition this week. For many of the young ladies, this was their first visit aboard a ship of this size. Accompanied by their chaperones, Director of Student Services at the Dominica State College, Edgar Hunter, and teachers, the girls toured the cabins, dining areas, theater, and casino. Reigning Miss Jamboree, Carla Henry, also escorted the group. The seven contestants, Saisha Valmand, Kudel Coffey, Sue Ellen Myers, Hendrika Smith, Dahlia Bruno, Christine Tavernier, and Sida Charles will face off on February 4th. It is a well-known fact that anyone in the public eye is exposed to criticism and scrutiny, and that is especially the case for pageant contestants. Veteran cultural activist and director of the Waitukubuli Dance Theatre Company, Raymond Lawrence, stressed that the young women in the teenage pageant should not focus on the naysayers. But then you have to be able to decipher and discern what is destructive and what is constructive. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, our advice to them is really to forget about the destructive um, and you don't really pay much attention to it at all because these are people that are just out to bring you down in a sense. Lauren said that the young ladies should focus on the criticisms that can help them make improvements and build them up. He commented that many women who have participated in the teenage pageant have gone on to be very successful. Been, you know, taking it, a lot of them have, as I said before, have gone on to do very, very well. There's some of them that have gone on to actually win the Miss Dominica crown. You know, a few examples are Mara Walter, Leandra Lander, Vanessa Isles, Minerve Lewis. Mm -hmm. These are girls that took part in the teen pageant and later on went on to actually win the title of Miss Dominica. So it goes to show that the pageant, the teen pageant, can be a wonderful stepping stone to greater things. The 39th Miss Teenage Pageant Competition, organized by the Waitukubuli Dance Theatre, will be held at the Windsor Park Forecourt on Sunday. In other stories, the Environmental Health Department has heightened its measures in mitigating the chances of the Zika virus being introduced to Dominica. Chief Environmental Health Officer Anthony Scotland says they have increased fogging in and around the city of Roseau in an effort to curb the adult population of the Aedes aegypti mosquitoes who are the hosts for the Zika virus. The National Pest and Termite Control have begun fogging in the Marigot Health District in and around the airport and Kalibishi because these areas have a high incidence of Aedes aegypti. So we're calling on residents in these areas to take the appropriate action to reduce the population. Scotland said fogging will continue at the Portsmouth Health District and communities including Newtown, Castle Comfort, Lubia, Roseau Central, Kings Hill, Bath Estate, Ems Hall and Silver Lake. Bath Estate, where we had an explosion of chikungunya, which was like a lab for the chikungunya. Bath Estate, Tarish Pete, Yam Peace and Fokole will be given urgent attention at this time. The Chief Environmental Health Officer is urging the public to ensure they clean their surroundings to minimize breeding areas for mosquitoes. Although the passage of Tropical Storm Erica dumped a significant amount of rain on the island, 2015 recorded below normal rainfall. And this is according to meteorologist Annie Carrett Joseph, who said below normal rainfall was recorded at the Douglas Charles and the Canefield Airport. For 2015, rainfall totals for Canefield amounted up to about 9% below the average, where Douglas Charles it was about 29% below average. Tropical storm Erica contributed 
just about 13% of that rainfall at Douglas Charles and here at Canefield about 22% of the rainfall during Erica added up to this year's of sorry 2015 totals. Joseph said for the past two years the Met Office has been recording below normal rainfall and as such numerous Caribbean islands are under a long-term drought warning meaning drought conditions are possible and measures should be in place to conserve water. Dominica's Citizenship by Investment program has come under attack lately, with critics complaining that many of those who receive Dominican passports are individuals of ill repute. His Excellency Vince Henderson, Dominica's ambassador to the United Nations, says that the program is managed properly has been tested and proven secure. We've been operating the program since 1993. It's gone through several changes. We've strengthened it like nobody else. It is the first time that there are laws, that there are regulations governing how the program should be run. And we passed the SR&O in 2014 to further strengthen the program and to ensure that it is being run properly. I know for a fact that there are citizenship by investment programs around the world without due diligence, without any due diligence. Henderson is urging Dominicans to embrace the program as the funds gained are used to help develop and transform Dominica through healthcare programs, small business opportunities, the NEP, and agriculture. Henderson emphasized that all investments are open to scrutiny by any member of the public, including the opposition leader, Lennox Linton, and is audited and published. So far, according to Henderson, the program has raised more than $120 million because investors have confidence in the governance of the country. Dominica's sole electricity provider, Domlec, says they have a huge task ahead as it relates to repairs on their system as a result of damage by Tropical Storm Erica. Generation manager Dave Stamp said that although the system is operational, infrastructural damage is, a still, is still a cause for concern due to damage caused by the Roseau River during the storm. Probably by the end of the year, because there is a lot of civil infrastructure and engineering works that have to be done to restore some of these structures. And we hope to have those structures restored by the end of the year, but we will do so in a way that it does not affect the hydro system. Stamp is urging individuals who use the Roseau River to protect their pipelines, as they are not only important to Dumlek, as the integrity of these pipelines goes right back to the cost of electricity. Stamp said the more hydroelectricity they produce, the cheaper the rate of electricity and the pipelines in the Roseau River are vital for their hydro system. Chief Executive Officer of the Dominica Air and Seaport Authority, Benoit Bardwill, says the Canefield Airport plays a very important role in Dominica's aviation industry. Badwell said the relevance of the airport was evident as it was the only operational airport following the passage of Tropical Storm Erica. Because of the fact that um, in Dominica, in terms of the vulnerability index is, is, is very high, um, Kidfield Airport will be with us for a long time. And so we will do whatever it takes to ensure that we can continue to have service um, through that airport. Uh, as you quite rightly pointed out, after Tropical Storm Erica, uh, Canefield bore the brunt, brunt of the burden in terms of ensuring that persons could still access Dominica. Badwell said Liat and Win Air adding additional flights to the Canefield Airport is also good news for the airport and access to the country. Hummingbird Air, Coastal Airways, and Caribbean Helicopters are just some of the airlines that operate at the Canefield Airport, in addition to airplanes for DHL, FedEx, the Air Ambulance, and other private airplanes and helicopters. Because of the fact that... Carnival lovers each year have looked forward to the Booyah Monarch and Wet Fet events. 
This year, the two have combined forces for a 16-hour marathon of entertainment. Organizer Hillary Tilly Thomas says that the plan is to combine the two and provide an event of international standards. We, the Wet Fed organizers, decide this year we're going to gang up with the Puyo Monarch organizers to get one big package, one nice entertainment event for the country. I find the Wet Fed is a, a little, to me, is a little mediocre. I, I need to bring it up, I need to get it up a little notch. So I decide now I'm going to gang up with them Puyo Monarch boys because they have a good product bringing on the Puyo Monarch. That's our team and we can't let it go. The 16-hour event will begin at 8 p.m. on Saturday and end at noon on Sunday and will feature a complete carnival package with costume bands, prizes, appearances by Queen contestants and more. Tilly emphasized that this merger is designed to ensure that everyone can afford it. So that poor man can afford to go and get a, a big shoe at a liquor price and the price is forty dollars two big shoes combined together to make one forty dollars one show is fifty dollars but the two shows now is forty dollars so we actually take a drop to make everybody come in because we know things things not work things not running money not flowing the show will be staged at the windsor park stadium forecourt or carnival village in football, 28 players have been called up for training in preparation for the Windward Island Tournament to be staged in Dominica in May of this year. The players are Elijah Titt, Kadisha Joseph, Cora Francis, Henrika Samuel, Christina Sobers, Miriam Elwin, Kiana Francis, Onisha Deluge, Samantha Joseph, Muria Esprit, Brittany Stout, Donish, Donish Xavier, Tabik Lockhart, Ezra Elwin, Cassandra Augustine, Romelcia Philip, Cassica Samuel, Tanya Burnett, Nadej Luizzi, Christine Maxime, Shavana Pascal, Rihanna Renault, Micheline Morgan, Chazelle Philip, Rosalie Regist, Kimberly A. Lee, Cassandra Alexander, and Kimora Elwin. The coaching staff reads Stanton Serafin as head coach, Kieran Charles as assistant coach, Melvin Angle as the goalkeeper coach with Joel Hamilton, the fitness trainer, and Glenda Fagan, the medics personnel. The manager of the team will be announced later. The players are to attend a meeting with the coaching staff tomorrow at the Dominica Grammar School from 5 p.m. The Sports Division's 2016 United Insurance Under-20 Cricket Championship will continue on tomorrow with a match at the Botanical Gardens. The Isaiah Thomas Secondary School will play the St. Mary's Academy School from 10 a.m. Medics personnel Albert Noel has praised the efforts of the Dominica Football Association in being the only sporting association on the island to have medical support at every game. Noel says that it is a step in the right direction as the teams will have the basic knowledge of how to deal with an injury on the field. And I, can, I must see, and I can see it openly, that the Dominica Football Association presently is the only club or member association which supports the clubs with the medical assistant facilities in the line of dealing with injuries which happens onto the field. And we must applaud the Dominica Football Association for taking up this initiative. I must say over the past years we have had our challenges and like any other um, sporting fraternity in Dominica of course they to go for their challenges. But by just providing the teams with the basic knowledge of how to deal with injuries which will occur on the field is a big step in the football business in Dominica. 
Albert Noel also told participants of a medical conference at the DFA building that the basics they learn, they will be able to put it into practice, which will at some point come in handy. Of course, in sports medicine, as I was taught, that each medical practitioner will have the challenge at some point in life. And of course, they have to refer or ask for medical assistance. What you will learn here today will be the basic. And you will be able to put it into, into practice. You are not a doctor. You, some of you here may be facilitators. But um, it will help you. It will help your club. And maybe by extension, your family, some, someday. You know whatever you learn here today. And that was medics personnel at the Dominica Football Association, Albert Noel. The West Indies Cricket Board has so far granted four no-objection certificates for players who are slated to play in the inaugural Masters Champions League. The Masters Champions League is an approved tournament of the International Cricket Council and is set to run from Thursday, January 28th to Saturday, February 13th in the United Arab Emirates. The four players to be eligible, they should have retired from international cricket and so far Shivner and Shandapal, Tino Best, Fidel Edwards and Krishma Santoki have written to the board indicating they have retired. The players are, however, still eligible to compete for their respective franchises in their member countries, regional tournaments, and other worldwide leagues. Thanks for watching CBN 4's Primetime News. Once again, I am your presenter, Sheena Harry. Good evening.